Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. <coughs> Today we will start uh, the series of the world class professor. There is the program from the higher higher education from the Ministry of the Culture, Education, Research and Technology, uh, Republic of Indonesia. <coughs> so uh, before we start. Uh, I will mention the short biography of Professor Tetsuya Kawanisi from Waseda University. <clears throat> Name of the Tetsuya Kawanisi affiliation is Professor from the Department of Department of Electronic and Physical System. School of Fundamental Science and Engineering, Faculty of Science and Engineering, Waseda University. And his education, his bachelor is from the Kyoto University, Kyoto, Japan. And then the thesis title is Wave Propagation in Random Media. And then Master of Engineering, also from the Kyoto University, Japan. And then with the thesis title Electromagnetic Wave Scattering from Two Dimensional Planar Road Surface. And then the doctor, also from Kyoto University, Japan, with the thesis title Electromagnetic Wave Scattering from Road Surfaces. Okay. And then now, the uh, head of the laboratory of the Information and Communication Technology of Research of Communication. This is right, Prof. Now uh, I already uh, left the uh, NICT, so NICT, I was the head, yes. yeah, I was the head of the. Okay. Uh, but now uh, I'm a professor. Okay, and then the several honors and award is uh, URCI Young Scientist Award, and then IEEE Fellow. Okay, there is. Uh, sort of biography from the uh, professor Tetsuya Kamenesi. So let's, uh, we will start the session, Prof, with your title. Okay. This uh, screen and time is yours. Please. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm uh, sharing my screen. Now, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see, bro. Okay, I uh, make it in a presentation mode. My screen with the presentation mode. Oh, I have a problem. Okay. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Um, I'm very happy to have uh, the lecture for you. Uh, it's related to the radio and optical uh, uh, system, the convergence of radio and uh, optical systems, uh, which would be um, useful to configure beyond 5G or 6G system. And in my presentation, I'd like to focus on, on a, uh, ICT system dedicated to uh, public infrastructure as well. Um, today, I'd like to uh, give you an uh, introduction of my lecture. Okay, uh, today I, I'd like to use the two uh, presentation files. This is the first one. Uh, here's an overview of uh, the lecture. The purpose of this lecture to offer the comprehensive and detailed information on wired and wireless seamless access systems, um, the, uh, uh, which consists of various types of transmission media, including microwaves, uh, millimeter waves, terahertz waves, and light waves in fibers. And uh, uh, in uh, this uh, lecture, uh, I'd like to touch upon heterogeneous uh, networks consisting of various transmission media, as I mentioned, and the transmission media is uh, uh, 
connected through um, many media converters. So signal conversion will be also a very important issue. And I'd like to share uh, some example of applications of such networks and the uh, communication systems for uh, public infrastructure, such as airports and uh, railways. And uh, uh, um, uh, as a basics of uh, such system, I'd like to explain the high capacity transmission limitation due to economics, as well as uh, physics and low latency transmission. Latency will be in a very important aspect to describe the performance of the system. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, latency is very important. And, uh, uh, for example, in our financial transaction and online gaming, it's very uh, sensitive to uh, latency. And I'd like to share the concept of sensor over fiber, uh, which consists of multiple antenna units connected through optical fibers. That system uh, can offer high resolution uh, the imaging, uh, which can detect the small object on runway. Uh, such system will be very, very useful to ensure the safety of the, um, uh, the uh, airport, the population. And uh, due to the limitation of the time slot, I, I think I don't have enough time to touch upon on a device issue, but if I have enough time, I'd like to also uh, uh, show you some basics on uh, optoelectric devices and uh, the signal estimation techniques, uh, which are uh, indispensable for uh, to configure uh, the such system. This is the overview of my uh, the, uh, lecture, and the uh, the last half of my lecture, I like to uh, uh, we will have uh, some uh, particular time slot to have the open discussion or to share. The, what's going on my uh, the lab and also uh, I'd like to share some schemes in a uh, higher education in Japan as well. The um, uh, uh, presentation of my uh, lecture uh, based on the book here, the title is Wired and Wired System, Seamless Access System for Public Infrastructure. So uh, if you are interested in the detail of uh, the contents, uh, you can uh, refer to uh, th th this book. Before going into the introduction part, I'd like to uh, share the table of contents. I think it's a good idea to see the structure of my lecture. The um, chapter one is introduction. Uh, after the introduction of the uh, table of contents, uh, today I have a presentation on the introduction part. And in a chapter two, uh, um, I will share the role of radio and optical technologies in public infrastructure. I will um, touch upon the three types of, uh, in, the, in the book, uh, uh, I, I show the three types of uh, the, the system as an examples. The first one is a railway communications. As you know, it's very um, the common public transportation in Japan as well as in your country. Uh, there are many types of system to prevent, to avoid the uh, serious, uh, the, the, uh, the collision or incident. The most, uh, the common one is a blocking system to avoid the, the collision between the, uh, the trains. And another one is an emergency alarm system uh, to avoid the collision uh, with uh, the car or the uh, uh, the uh, personals, uh, the uh, this system is employed uh, deployed in uh, major Japanese um, uh, railway companies. Uh, oh. Oh. Tetsuya, excuse me. This is yeah. still on uh, slide one in your presentation because uh, several person maybe. Cannot see your presentation. This is still still slide one, or yeah, yeah. It, now you can see now uh, uh, the table of contents. No, I see just uh, <laughs> the slide slide one. The title: Convergence of Radio and Optical System. Okay, I think I I I uh, I got a, some this strange message from my Zoom the uh, the application. So. 
I try to um, restart the sharing. Yes, you can restart. Yeah. How about this? Yes, this is table of content now, Prof. Okay, correct. Yeah. Now uh, the uh, the page changing function is okay. Yes, okay, it's okay. working. Okay. okay, sorry about this. Now uh, I'm talking about the uh, table of content chapter two. As I mentioned, there are two types of the the system to prevent the accident in a railway system: blocking system and emergency alarm system. The comparison between these two systems uh, offers us the insight on the uh, importance of the selection of the transmission um, media. For example, in a, a blocking system, the, uh, the, the system uses the uh, signal transmission over the railway. And the second one uh, uses the uh, radio wave propagation in the air by using the combination of the transmission media, we can ensure the safety of the railway. Actually, I will uh, show you the details later. And second one is a, a telecommunication for power grid. The, uh, stable, uh, uh, the stable operation of power grid is very important. And if uh, we have, even if we have the, some the, uh, serious situation due to the disaster, the, uh, we have to control the power grid uh, safely. So uh, they have to have their own uh, telecommunication system. As you know, in Japan, uh, we had um, a uh, serious uh, the disaster uh, due to the earthquake in an uh, uh, atomic reactor. In that case, uh, the telecommunication and the uh, power supply for the uh, atomic power station would be a very, very important issue. This is uh, uh, to, uh, to avoid such the accident, uh, the stable, the supply, uh, the power supply, and the telecommunication is very, very important. The third one is uh, nautical communication. As you know, to ensure the, uh, the safe, the operation of the, uh, the air airport and the uh, safe uh, flight, uh, we have to have the stable the, uh, radio communication. Now, chapter three, uh, I'd like to show you uh, basics of transmission media. Maybe you already uh, know uh, the uh, basics of transmission media. Just to remind the important items to, to understand the radio and optical uh, seamless network, I'd like to uh, uh, show, show you, you know, some basics of uh, electromagnetic waves and the reflection, reflection, and deflection. And I also touch upon the radio wave propagation in the air. And as an example, of the interesting feature of the uh, uh, electromagnetic wave, I'd like to show you now some, in, uh, some uh, interesting feature of a drop, Doppler effect. Doppler effect is very well known. Uh, uh, the frequency shift, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we can detect the frequency shift of the uh, electromagnetic wave uh, emitted from the moving object. But it's also associated with the phase delay due to uh, propagation delay. <clears throat> and I will um, and show you now some of the important feature of the electromagnetic wave propagation in waveguides. Uh, we can, if we look at the wave propagation in a tunnel, um, we can find uh, some interesting feature. Uh, there is uh, some analogy between uh, uh, wave propagation, radio wave propagation in a tunnel, and the wave propagation in the optical fiber. And in the last uh, uh, section on this chapter, I, I like to explain very important feature uh, to understand the uh, optical fiber transmission. The first one is optical loss. The second one is the chromatic dispersion. And most uh, the, uh, uh, the complicated one and it limits the total transmission capacity is the nonlinear effect. <clears throat> in chapter four, uh, the chapter four is for the seamless access network. I, I like to uh, touch upon a concept of the such system. Uh, the the first section is for the background, the need for seamless access uh, net, network. And uh, in the section four point two, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, explain the configuration of seamless networks. And in uh, 
the third section, I'd like to uh, have an, some discussion on power consumption of short distance radio links. And there is some interesting relationship between the uh, transmission speed and power consumption. And also in uh, uh, last section, I'd like to um, explain the uh, spectral efficiency the, and the carrier frequency. Uh, it's very important to mitigate spectral congestion. Uh, there are two ways to mitigate uh, spectral congestion. The first one is to use the high frequency band, and the second one is on uh, is the uh, in, uh, is to increase the spectral efficiency by using advanced modulation formats, for example. So in this section, so uh, I'd like to uh, offer you the overview of the trend of research of the terahertz and the higher frequency radio systems. And in chapter five, uh, I'd like to explain the, uh, uh, the basic configuration of a high capacity transmission system. The first section is on the uh, overview of the high speed transmission system. Uh, here, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, show you that there's some uh, the important the theory. Uh, maybe, you know, the Shannon theory offers the upper limit of the transmission capacity. I try to uh, explain the, uh, the meaning of the uh, Shannon theory by using the, some the, uh, the uh, drawing, I mean, the, some the, uh, block diagram. And the second section is on the uh, mod, uh, optical modulation. There are various types of optical modulation technologies. Uh, uh, we can use the uh, external modulator or uh, to to uh, generate the complicated uh, the, the, the signal. And uh, in the next section, uh, the section five point three, uh, I I will explain the multi level modulation system. Um, to to uh, uh, to make the uh, transmission system based on multi level modulation system, we have to use another language uh, the sources. And of course, we have to consider what kind of device can be used uh, for modulation and the detection. <clears throat> and the uh, the final, the last uh, the section is on uh, multi-channel transmission. Uh, um, as you know, uh, by using the uh, wavelength domain multiplexing, we can increase the transmission capacity. And also, uh, we can use the multi-core optical fibers. <clears throat> and the chapter six is on the low latency data transfer. Uh, in the first section, um, I will explain uh, the uh, definition of the latency and the uh, some uh, the comparison between the optical uh, 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 the communication and the physical transportation. Uh, it's very uh, I think it shows uh, some extreme cases, but if if by using the airplane we can transfer the uh, the uh, memory storage, for example. So we can compare the transmission speed of the optical fiber and the airplane. Actually, the transmission speed of airplane is much faster than the optical communication. But uh, if we look at the latency, there is some difference. So I'd like to show you the importance of the concept of the latency by using the, compar the comparison. And the <clears throat> section 6.2 is on application of uh, low latency data transfer. As I mentioned, uh, the low latency data transfer can be used for a financial application and also online gaming and also the uh, uh, VR applications. <clears throat> the next section is on uh, the uh, latency reduction. Of course, uh, we can uh, increase the propagation speed of electromagnetic waves by using the, some particular waveguide structure. Of course, we cannot change the speed of light in the vacuum, but uh, uh, we can control the propagation speed uh, in the waveguide. <clears throat> and uh, uh, in, in the next section uh, here, I will touch upon a little bit about the uh, propagation speed of information and the latency in the uh, satellite communication system. Uh, in some uh, particular system, I mean, you know, uh, the Starlink offers the uh, satellite communication using low altitude orbit satellites. Uh, if we use a such system, the latency would be shorter 
than in the conventional satellite communication system. In some particular condition, the latency in the satellite communication system would be shorter than in the uh, optical fiber communication uh, due to the uh, difference of the refractive index in the optical fiber. I will show you the detail a little bit. <clears throat> Chapter seven is um, a sensor of a fiber. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it has many antennas. We call it distributed antenna systems. And uh, uh, as an example of the sensor of a fiber system, I'd like to show you the, uh, the radar system. As I mentioned, it can be used for a detection of undesired object on runway. <clears throat> and uh, in chapter eight, uh, I'd like to show you an uh, application in a uh, transport infrastructure. As I mentioned, uh, it can be used for a train communication system. Um, uh, we can make, um, uh, uh, we can offer the high speed transmission for the high speed railway by using the, for example, the unit rail communication system with uh, the optical networks. <clears throat> Due to the limitation of the time slot, I think I, 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 I cannot have the time to explain the detail on the chapter nine, but if you're interested in the detail, you can refer the book. And, but uh, I'd like to explain the, uh, the outline of the chapter. Chapter nine offers the application uh, in a mobile networks. The, in the first part, I uh, try to explain uh, the basics of uh, the, um, radio over fiber, digital radio over fiber, analog radio over fiber, and the delta sigma modulation. And I also uh, offer, uh, described <clears throat> basics of a DA conversion and the AD conversion, the coil bits and the, uh, against the NS, uh, uh, SNR. And uh, uh, in the digital radio over fiber, we have to consider about the uh, required bit rate for waveform transform. For 5G or beyond 6G, if we use a digital radio fiber, required bit rate would be uh, larger than uh, one terabit per second. This is a very big issue. <clears throat> Chapter 10 is on um, up to electronic devices. Once again, uh, maybe we, we don't have enough time to display uh, the, uh, the, uh, explain the details. Uh, the first chapter uh, section is on laser diode. Uh, there are um, um, interesting feature in uh, laser diode operation, laser oscillation uh, condition and the photon absorption emission, light amplification, light equation, direct modulation, and so on. And uh, the second section is on photodiode. Uh, as you know, uh, in a, a conventional, <clears throat> the textbook offers just a simple uh, the, uh, description of the photodiode made by PN junction or PIN. But in this book, I try to explain the uh, basic structure of the advanced photodiode, including the avalanche photodiode or a unit traveling carrier photodiode. In a uh, um, PN junction type, conventional type photodiode, uh, we utilize the current, uh, electric current by the uh, electrons and holes. But you know, the mobility of the hole is much uh, uh, less than, much slower than in the uh, electrons. So it limits the uh, high speed operation. But you need to have it in carrier photodiode uh, can, uh, uh, would use only the uh, current by the electrons. So we can speed up, we can uh, have the high speed operation. <clears throat> And the, this section is for mass sender modulator. As you know, a mass sender modulator can uh, be used for various applications. And the last chapter is on measurement technologies. Measurement technology is very important. Uh, the most of the uh, optical uh, the uh, measurement instrument is dedicated to the digital transmission system. But if we want to configure the uh, seamless access system, uh, which transfer the waveform, uh, we have to re redesign the uh, measurement technologies. We have to increase the preciseness or we have to um, uh, take care of the nonlinearity, for example. 
uh, this uh, chapter offers the frequency response measurement and the measurement of the occurrence. Okay, uh, this is the uh, POC. So uh, I'd like to uh, move on to an uh, introduction section. Just a second. Now you can see in a slide, right? Yes, I can see it, Prof. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, here I'd like to uh, um, move on to the R.5 on the introduction part. Okay. This slide is on overview. Um, Here's the first item: the the uh, the development the development of technologies used in nationwide and global infrastructure has a century long history. The uh, infrastructure means a railway, uh, aviation system, uh, maritime networks, and such system were uh, uh, incubated for ICT. Advanced radio wave and electronic devices have been developed for such applications, including truck circuits for railway signaling and long haul high frequency radio communication for air traffic control. The truck circuit means a signal transmission using the, uh, the radio, actually. A radio is made from ion. So uh, uh, we can transfer the signal over the railway. And uh, uh, high performance uh, compact ICT devices, including smartphones, have penetrated the global consumer market because ICT has made remarkable progress in its capacity and cost reduction. This is uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the trend uh, we can see recently. So uh, as I mentioned, the uh, the uh, nationwide uh, the, or global infrastructure was well, the incubator for ICT, but now in some public infrastructure, the performance of ICT is lagging behind that of consumer uh, telecommunication networks because uh, it, it has a century long history and lifetime of the equipment in the uh, such system is much longer than for example, our smartphone. So now uh, we have to uh, uh, um, replace a, a part of the, such a system. The convergence of wired and wireless transmission is indispensable for high performance mobile networks. Uh, these items are overview of uh, my presentation. And here, I'd like to uh, touch upon the history of ICT for public infrastructure a little bit more. Our society relies on a wide variety of nationwide and global infrastructure, uh, such as transportation networks, 
uh, in, which includes the, the railway and power grid and telecommunication network, as you know. As I mentioned, the development of technology to use it in such infrastructure has a century long history. And uh, uh, they are the, the incubator, as I mentioned. In such ICT uh, systems, the, uh, we use advanced radio wave and electron devices. The um, most advanced technology were devoted into uh, important public infrastructures um, more than a few decades ago. Uh, the same things happened in the military application, for example. But now, uh, the uh, our uh, the smartphone relies on the advanced the, 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 the uh, large scale integrated circuit, as you know. <clears throat> and once again, a telecommunication for end users, uh, such as telephony service, it's were uh, based on low-cost technologies uh, transferred from the advanced technology dedicated for infrastructure. So it happens um, um, uh, many years ago. Uh, the advanced technologies were uh, developed for uh, the uh, public infrastructure. And uh, at the early stage, the cost will be high. But after the development, the cost will be getting uh, lower. That's why we can use uh, such a technology in a daily life. This is um, the flow of the technology many, many years ago. <clears throat> okay, I'd like to um, show you now some history of the <clears throat> ICT uh, used for public infrastructure. Here's a photo of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge Railway. Maybe some of you announced the San, Fra San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. Now uh, there is no the uh, train operation between San Francisco uh, over the uh, Bay Bridge, but uh, instead of this, they have this um, subway. But before they starting uh, the uh, subway service, they already had um, advanced the uh, uh, Bay Bridge Railway. <clears throat> it has actually the automatic train control system. Um, maybe uh, you know uh, in Japan. The, uh, uh, the Japanese railway company established the world first the high-speed train. It's based on the uh, automatic train control system. Uh, some of uh, Japanese believe that this is the world first uh, the uh, advanced control system, but uh, U.S. already established the, uh, the such system. <clears throat> and here then are the, uh, um, the example of maritime radio communication system. Maybe you know uh, Titanic had an uh, the accident. Um, her uh, the trip from the, uh, the the UK to US, and and there are many reasons uh, um, why the, such accident happens. But uh, uh, one of the reason uh, is the uh, problem in the radio communication. Uh, the uh, radio uh, equipment on board had uh, some problem, and even in that age. They had uh, some the competition between the, uh, uh, the telecom operator and the uh, vendor. Actually, in that case, uh, in that era, uh, the um, uh, there are many big com uh, the uh, operators. One of them is Marconi. Marconi offers uh, radio equipment and also the ground station in the uh, North America and the uh, U uh, European side. Uh, only if we purchase the radio equipment from Marconi, we can use the ground station in uh, North America or uh, the <clears throat> uh, UK side. And uh, there is uh, some standardization issue. Maybe you know uh, uh, SOS. SOS is very important code uh, to uh, uh, to ask the help. Uh, um, if they have the, some the accident, but uh, uh, the uh, Titanic used another uh, code first because Marconi is a kind of the uh, the a giant in that uh, the business at that era, so they have their own 
uh, special code. That's why the um, the Titanic used the uh, some the uh, particular code uh, defined by the Marconi. But after this, uh, she also transmitted the uh, uh, SOS uh, following by the international standard. It looks like the competition between the uh, Microsoft and the Apple. Uh, same things happened at that era. Here is um, the um, map um, with the submarine cable. Submarine cable uh, connects between the Europe and the US over the Atlantic Ocean. This is a map of the uh, Atlantic cable uh, in uh, 1855. At that time, they used the uh, coaxial cable and <clears throat> The um, uh, transmission capacity is very limited. They just use the uh, um, <clears throat> telegraph. And here is another map. And this is a map of the submarine cable at 1901. Uh, by comparing this, uh, the map shown before, uh, you can see uh, they already had the complicated the networks. And uh, the purpose of the telecommunication at that era is to make a connection from the mainland of the European countries and the, uh, their own uh, territory, uh, overseas territory, I mean the colony. So if uh, you see, uh, the UK had some uh, global network from the uh, Britain Island to uh, uh, the uh, Africa and other countries. At, at that time, the, there is no direct connection between uh, Japan and the US. If you're interested in, uh, you can get the, um, the submarine cable map from this URL. <clears throat> now we have so many cables. Uh, if we compare with the submarine cable in 1901, uh, there is a big difference on the Pacific Ocean. There are so many cables connecting US and Japan. Actually, about 10 or more years ago, almost all cables by uh, 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 cables are connecting US and Japan. Japan would be in a kind of the port of the data from US. But now, the um, many cables pass through Japan, directly connect US and China or some Asian countries. <clears throat> Okay, here uh, I'd like to uh, move on to uh, another topic, the progress in uh, ICT for consumers. As I mentioned, the, uh, uh, we, now we can see the remarkable progress, progress in ICT for consumers. High performance, uh, the compact ICT devices, including smartphones have penetrated the global consumer market. <clears throat> the cost is getting cheaper day by day. Uh, due to rapid development of the advanced semiconductor technologies, the evolution of ICT hardware is so significant among technologies used in various infrastructures. New ICT is now the driving force for evolution of the other infrastructure. If we look at, for example, the uh, motor industries, uh, they, uh, the most important item to make a car was the engine or tires or gear or something. To control the, uh, uh, the uh, engine, they developed the small, uh, the uh, integrated circuit. So the uh, engine or mechanical uh, te uh, engineering technology will be a driving force for ICT. But now the ICT itself is a driving force for evolution of the car or other infrastructure. This is a very important point. 
the infrastructure, uh, the ICT uh, was, uh, 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 public infrastructure was an incubator for ICT, uh, incubated by ICT was incubated by other industry. But now ICT is driving uh, the uh, evolution of other infrastructure. Okay, here uh, I'd like to talk about more about uh, state of our devices for consumer applications. A major part of modern telecommunication networks are for general purpose consumer applications. The uh, state of our device technologies are needed. The uh, best semiconductor processing techniques are used to fabricate general purpose processors for consumer applications, as you know. Okay, here's an example. The fastest modern uh, supercomputer in Japan, the name is Fugaku, is equipped with ARM-based CPU. As you know, uh, this is a commonly used uh, concept, uh, the uh, architecture for smartphones. The advanced ICT hardware dedicated to consumer application can be used for important public office, uh, the infrastructures and also for advanced scientific application. So the flow of technology is flipped. As I mentioned, in the old age, the advanced scientific, scientific, scientific application or public infrastructure would be an incubator. So it would be a source of advanced technology. And after that, uh, we can use the outcome uh, for uh, such, uh, such a system, the, uh, the uh, outcome of the research for such systems. But now uh, the uh, trend and the flow of technology was free. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the ICT or public infrastructure lagging behind consumer electronics. A communication system based on general purpose networks can be used for public infrastructure. However, it is difficult to provide broadband uh, connection to high speed moving objects and to vessels in inhabited areas, for example. In a city center, it's okay. And here's another issue. The lifetime of the system used for public infra infrastructure is much longer than that of the ICT system for consumer application. So the supply chain issue is very important. Uh, in a train system, uh, in a, some particular systems, they use uh, the more than 20 years or 30 years, but the lifetime of the ICT is much shorter than this. Uh, the transmission capacity of the Ethernet has increased a thousand or hold from 10 base T to 10 G base T. On the other hand, the speed of Japanese high speed rail, the name is the Shinkansen, was increased from 210 kilometer per hour to uh, 320 kilometer hour in the last 50 years over one gigabit per second uh, high transmission data, uh, high speed data transmission is offered in modern, modern mobile services for end users. But a uh, bit late uh, in service radio wave links for railway operation is up to a few megabit per second in Japanese case. This is an issue. The lifetime has difference and the, there is a gap in a, a, a transmission capacity. Okay, here uh, I'd like to uh, um, um, talk about uh, some important issue, ICT uh, based on optical fibers and wireless links. Uh, the uh, modern telecommunication networks are based on optical fibers and high-speed wireless links. And global telecommunication networks were established by wireless communication, such as uh, satellite link more than 50 years ago. Almost all overseas data traffic now relies on submarine cable transmission instead of satellite links. Optical fiber offers low loss signal transmission where the data transmission capacity can be over 10 terabits per second. An optical signal can be directly transferred from Japan to United States, as you know. The broadband wireless transmission is realized by short wavelengths, uh, radio waves, such as microwaves, millimeter waves, terahertz waves. Uh, the significant application is short distance communication. 
this is very important. And uh, uh, 50 years ago, uh, the uh, most advanced wireless transmission is dedicated to uh, global communication, long haul transmission. But now they, uh, we are looking at the short distance communication and long haul transmission is uh, realized by the optical fiber. End user prefer uh, wireless connection because of their flexibility. If you look at the connection between the PC and the mouse, maybe we can use the USB connection, wired connection, but just for flexibility, now we are using the, uh, the Bluetooth. So the purpose is uh, um, has big difference if you look at the application in uh, 50 years ago. Okay, now uh, it showed the uh, needs for wired and wireless seamless uh, networks. The uh, end users prefer a wireless uh, connection because of their flexibility. We should use uh, a combination of optical fibers and radio links to provide nationwide global services due to limitation of radio transmission distance and radio spectrum congestion. So uh, we have to minimize uh, the radio communication part to save the uh, uh, radio spectrum. The major part of the data transfer should be realized by optical networks. The convergence of the wired and wireless transmission is indispensable for high performance mobile networks. Uh, there are, uh, we have to have um, many small base stations are uh, connected by optical network. Okay, I have uh, 10, okay, so, sorry, I have three more slides. Here is a comparison table. Um, Optical wave and radio wave. Carrier frequency has big difference. Uh, the optical wave, in optical wave, carrier frequency is 200 hertz. In a radio wave, less than two, uh, 300 gigahertz at this moment. Uh, frequency fluctuation in optical transmission system is much uh, bigger than in a radio wave, as you can see here. And, uh, but uh, 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 precise, preciseness of the uh, wave control is um, um, not so significant in an optical wave communication system. For example, the required extinction rate is around 20 dB. In a radio wave system, it should be 50 dB. And in uh, um, the uh, measurement system, the frequency resolution will be around 10 G in an optical wave. In a radio wave, it can be uh, close to one hertz. Um, in optical wave, the bandwidth would be a few tera terahertz or something, but in a radio wave, it should be uh, uh, less than 10 G. And here's a um, very interesting feature, signals whose bandwidth are from 10 G to uh, 100 gigahertz can be manipulated in electronic and photonics domain. So we have two selections. So if we define the system with a bandwidth uh, from 10G to uh, 100G, uh, we can use the optical signal processing and electric signal processing. If the bandwidth is smaller than this, we have only one choice, electric signal processing. If the bandwidth is wider than 100G, we have to use the optical signal processing. So if we select the bandwidth within a particular, a particular area, uh, we can uh, use the combination of optical and electric signal processing. Okay, uh, this uh, uh, slide just to show the importance of the convergence of the radio wave and the digital system. In uh, 1980, the particular frequency for the uh, radio equipment is around 200 megahertz. Here is an example of the TV set. And uh, the frequency of the digital signal system was just a uh, four megahertz. So there is no overlap. The uh, engineer for PC uh, is just uh, focusing on the uh, logical circuit 
and the analog circuit guys are just looking at the TV set like this. But now, if we look at the frequency of 5G, it's a 28 gigahertz. And the satellite, the uh, uh, service frequency is 12. And the clock frequency of the uh, PC would be around 5 gigahertz. So there is no big difference. We have to consider uh, seamlessly. And here is uh, the uh, comparison between the analog and digital. Actually, there is no uh, pure uh, the analog signals uh, anymore. Almost all of the analog-like signal is generated by uh, a digital analog conversion. The most of the system are based on the multi-level or digital associated analog. And uh, uh, there is no um, uh, clear uh, the border. Uh, in a conventional PC, they use a binary modulation format. But uh, now uh, we can use a, a non-binary multi-level modulation format. As I, I mentioned, uh, if we can increase the level of the VAC, it looks like an analog signal. There is no clear border between the analog and digital. Okay, this is my last slide. Uh, the, um, the aim of this lecture is to provide comprehensive and detailed, inf detailed information on the wired and the wireless uh, seamless access system. The system consists of various types of transmission media, such as um, uh, microwave, millimeter wave, terahertz wave, and light waves in the uh, fibers. In a uh, uh, beyond 5G or 6G system, uh, we have to have many antenna units. The number of antenna units will be larger than the population, I think. The, obviously, it is difficult to connect all antennas to conventional optical fiber network. So uh, we focus on seamless access network uh, uh, to, uh, to let the all antennas are connected. Uh, through heterogeneous networks consisting of various transmission media with many media converters. Okay, uh, that's it from me. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Katsuya, for the material introduction of the radio convergence radio and optical fiber technology radio and optical fiber technology so next we we go to the session uh, question and answer the all of participants you can raise hand and then you can or you can chat in the box for the question okay please Maybe the, you can uh, question for this lecture. Doctor Three, maybe. Doctor Three, maybe you have a question. She is the member of the project for the high speed train in Indonesia, Prof. Okay, uh, uh, do I think uh, the question for, uh, from the participant, maybe I have a question, Prof. <clears throat> okay, uh, <clears throat> you can uh, explain what is the hot issue, you know, what, what the hot issue and the, for the, this technology, uh, radio conversion optical fiber in Japan. And then what is the correlation maybe you can apply. There is there is possible uh, radio convergence optical fiber in Japan. For the example, in the transport uh, high speed transport in Japan, in for example, in, uh, in the Shinkansen, there is possible to apply maybe in in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Okay. The uh, challenge in the future mm -hmm. for the research. Okay. Um, First, I'd like to mention uh, the situation of Japan. Uh, at this moment, the major operator uses the uh, radio bar fiber to offer the, uh, the high performance mobile services, but it's uh, based on digital radio bar fiber. 
But now, many operators started analog radio or fiber research because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, required bandwidth for beyond 5G would be quite huge. So we cannot use just a simple digital radio over fiber. That's why, for example, entity Docomo or some uh, com uh, KDEI or companies are trying to uh, make, um, trying to uh, work on the analog radio over fiber. But analog radio over fiber has also many issues. Uh, we have to take care of nonlinearity, or so you know, analog signal is very fla fragile. Uh, this is a very hot topic in the research. So at this moment, it's not clear uh, which direction they will uh, take, but uh, uh, it's very clear. We cannot apply the simple, uh, the digital radio over fiber. Uh, just we can apply the conventional technology to the beyond 5G because the required bandwidth is huge. Uh, this is the situation in Japan. And uh, in a uh, uh, railway system, Actually, uh, I think uh, I can have a chance to explain more detail later, but uh, uh, we demonstrated the uh, high speed transmission by using the um, actual Shinkansen system. We have demonstrated more than one gigabit per second transmission for the moving uh, the high speed train. But uh, I'm not sure we should use the combination of the optical fiber and the new metal ray. But at this moment, at least, we should use, we can use uh, the uh, new metal wave communication system for high speed train. And uh, you know, high speed train uh, does not have the steep curves. That means we can easily uh, configure the stable communication by using the new metal wave. Actually, uh, uh, in uh, China, they have high-speed maglev in Shanghai. It's imported from uh, the Germany. And actually, they don't uh, publish any details, but in German company, they uh, had a publication on the telecommunication system for maglev system. They use a millimeter wave communication system. So if the... Um, um, Indonesian company, um, uh, railway company, um, uh, want to uh, establish a high speed transmission for the high speed train. Maybe uh, they can use the millimeter wave connection. In Japan, and they use the uh, the uh, VHF uh, the uh, communication system uh, when they started the operation, but they had they announced uh, they some the plan to replace the system. Uh, 50 years ago, there is no millimeter wave connection system. That's why the Japanese high-speed train uses a very old-fashioned uh, communication system. As I mentioned, the ICT system for public infrastructure uh, lags behind the advanced ICT. But in your country, now you are making the new uh, the system. That means uh, you can use the uh, uh, advanced system, maybe done in Japan. This is uh, my opinion. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof. Maybe the last question, uh, what is the challenge for the future on this research, uh, especially the, uh, in the uh, railway for, uh, of the convergence, convergence radio and optical fiber? What is the challenge this is in the future? Uh, you mean, what is the chance of the future? What is the future of the convergence? Okay. okay. Okay, um, it, I think we can start with a public infrastructure because it's not easy to decrease the uh, cost quickly. So uh, if we can focus on the advanced application, uh, of course the market would be smaller than the consumer application, but uh, uh, we can focus on the high tech and even if the market itself is not so big, the role of the high-speed train or the airport is very important. And this is a very important issue. Uh, for example, in Japan, we have this serious discussion on how, how to uh, manage the operation of the uh, railway system in a local community. 
uh, they cannot earn money so much. So many people uh, think uh, we can stop the operation of the railway on the countryside. If we look at the income and the expense, we can have a, such a discussion. But um, many people got uh, the, um, the benefit from the, such an infrastructure. So if we look at the, such an infrastructure, uh, such a, the benefit, I think uh, um, we have uh, we can focus on uh, such application. And uh, I, I'd like to mention one more thing: the competition with the big companies. The, stand, uh, the standpoint of Japan is not so strong than before. Uh, you know, uh, in Japan, we have so many big com uh, companies, but market share of the mobile phone or the uh, base station is not so big if we compare with uh, uh, before. Uh, if we have uh, the Japanese company has a big share, of course, we can focus on the consumer applications this is one of the idea. But uh, if we look at the uh, actual situation, I think it's a good idea to focus on some particular application, particular uh, medium size uh, the market, and the, but uh, it's very important. It's useful for the community. I think uh, we can share uh, uh, such idea uh, with uh, the colleague from Indonesia as well. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tsuya. <clears throat> okay, any question again from the audience or participants? Any question? If no, maybe this is, we, we will close the session, Prof. We will meet again in the 12th of September. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. yeah, okay. but in the 12th of September, you are in the Europe, okay. No, no, in, I think in Japan. I oh, still in Japan, but what's the time you will go to Europe? I, I'm going to Europe from uh, 16. 16? Yeah, 16 to uh, 2023. Okay, maybe we'll start in the Europe in the early morning, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, in the 19th. Nine. I think, uh, yeah, uh, we will have the lecture from uh, 1 p.m. in Indonesia time. That means uh, in the morning. In the uh, 7, 7 a.m. in the Europe, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Professor, uh, thank you very much. Okay, before uh, we close the session, please uh, turn on your camera for all participants because we will, we will go to take a picture. Okay, please on the your camera. I will get a picture in the three counts. One, two, three. And then once more, one, two, three. And then once more again, one, two, three. Okay, uh, for Tessia, thank you very much. Maybe, oh, I, uh, sorry, uh, I have, uh, this is uh, coming, Dr. Aziz Muslim, the head of Department of Electrical Engineering. Maybe you can get a little speech for uh, Prof. Tessia, Dr. Aziz, please. Yeah, uh, for uh, your time for uh, uh, joining us in our uh, board plus professor. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I hope that you uh, can uh, enjoy uh, this uh, occasion and uh, we wish uh, to meet you uh, perhaps in the next time in uh, Indonesia. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, let's go. Professor Dr. Aziz is a PSG from Japan also, so that's why he can speak in Japanese. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for all participants and uh, Prof. Tetsuya. Uh, good morning. See you in the next session, 12 September 20, 2022. See okay. You and goodbye. Thank you. Yeah, goodbye. Thank you. Bye. See you next time.